Okay, hello everybody. This is November 15th, 2018, the meeting of the Northampton City Council. I'm Ryan O'Donnell. I'll be presiding tonight. Um, let me first announce the audio and video recording of these proceedings. And we'll begin with public comment. This is a chance for members of the public to speak on any issue you wish. Uh, please keep the three minutes or less. And remember, we can't respond and have a back and forth with you. It's your time to give your opinion to us. So uh, let me start with the sign up sheet. It's only Jeremy Whalen. Mr. Whalen, if you give your name and address for the record, and the floor is. Hello, everybody. Uh, Jeremy Whalen, 31 Union Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, and I apologize I wasn't here last time. My name came before the, uh, the City Council in regards to referral to the Human Rights Commission. Uh, and Councillor Nash reached out to me as well. So I want to just formally introduce myself. I know a lot of you. Um, but I just wanted to, uh, to just introduce myself. So I'm Jeremy Whalen. I grew up in the Valley. Uh, I went to UMass for my undergraduate and my graduate degree. And I teach at Northampton High School. Uh, I really appreciate what the Human Rights Commission does. I think that we're a leader both on the local level and the national level of thoughtful discussion and compassionate discourse uh, on some pretty, uh, some pretty great issues. Um, I want to uh, bring my experiences and my perspective in um, and also to use uh, my, my teaching uh, capacities as a bridge to our youth at the, at the high school and to engage our, our younger community. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to say hi and thank you for um, your, your, your recommendation. Uh, and I look forward to hopefully being on the commission. So thank you. Thank you for your willingness to serve on the commission. Thanks. And thank you for those comments. That's all I have signed up. Anyone else? Would anyone else like to give public comment this time? No? Um, well, you know, we're going to have to stall because we have a public hearing at 7.05. Does anyone want to make something up? <laughs> Jim, you want to say anything? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll muddle through. So, um, want to talk? <laughs> we're going to uh, convene, and I'll ask the role of the council to be called, please. Councilor Bidwell. Present. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. And Councilor Chair. Here. Okay. So we have a quorum, and we're convened. Um, let's skip to some updates. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize that this is the last night that Jen Ramsey of Northampton Community Television uh, is doing such great work as she always does, recording these proceedings. And I want to congratulate her because um, my understanding is she is the new director of East Hampton uh, Public Media. Is that the term of public TV in East Hampton? So much deserved, and she'll be missed here um, in these chambers. And we congratulate Jen Ramsey on that. So. We can use some special effects or something for this, maybe. Um, and some are, pigs. are there any other communications or uh, events or uh, announcements from councillors? None. Councillor Barge, did you have something? Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, do you have any? <laughs> any jokes or? Uh, <laughs> um, let's move to the consent agenda, if we if we might. Um, the consent agenda contains the following items. Uh, first, the minutes of November 1st, 2018. Uh, the question of appointments to various committees, which all received positive recommendations from the Committee on City Services, to the Planning Board, Terry Colhane of Five Stearns Court, to the Transportation and Parking Commission, Adam Novit of 17 Hooker Avenue, um, and to the Trust Fund Committee, Jake Dissinger of 8 Stowell Street in Leeds. Uh, next, we have, and I'm going to remove this one, 18. Uh, point two zero zero in order to approve a poll petition for dry heads green um, we've not had the hearing yet so I'm going to remove it and we're not going to vote on it yet um, and finally 18.201 application for uh, supervised display of fireworks so to hear a motion to approve Move approval yep. of the uh, consent agenda please uh, so uh, with uh, item C removed so with item C removed any uh, is there a second on that second Seconded by Council Murphy. So all those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? So that is approved. You hit it. And now Seven. we are at the appointed time, um, 7.05, which is the time that we have listed for a hearing. Um, this is on the question of a National Grid, Verizon New England's poll petition for Dryads Green. 
uh, in accordance with provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws. We are holding a public hearing um, today on a petition from Verizon New England um, National Grid to erect poles and wires upon, along, under, or across one or more public ways, in this case, Dryad's Green. The record, the poll petition number is 2704-5389. Do I hear a motion to open the hearing? So Make a motion. And seconded. All those in favor of opening the hearing, please say aye. 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 Opposed in the abstention. So I see uh, Ms. Jasinski here. And uh, if you would like to start us off. Sure. Lisa Jasinski with National Grid here in regards to the poll petition for Dryad's Green. It is to relocate poll number six um, on Dryad's Green, approximately six, uh, 23 feet southwest of the existing location. It's really to make way for a driveway for number 55. Um, dryad screen. Thank you. And it's my understanding that the Department of Public Works reviewed your petition and they are stipulating a couple of conditions. There are. You've received those. I have. Um, so for the record, I'll, if I may just read briefly sure. for the purpose of the hearing, um, this is to the Director of Public Works and Felix Harvey of the DPW. Um, uh, Mr. Harvey writes, I've received DBW records and visited the site to view the proposed moving reinstallation of poll number six on Dryad's Green num near number house 55. The proposed poll location is approximately 110 feet southwest of the intersection of Dryad's Green on the southeast side of Dryad's Green. There may be a conflict with the sewer lateral coming from either house number 55 or 57, so the DPW requires uh, two following things. Number one, when the new hole for the new pole location has been opened, it shall be inspected by the DPW prior to the pole being placed. And secondly, if the sewer lateral is disturbed in any way, it must be repaired and relocated by um, the developer at the discretion of the city engineer. National <coughs> must obtain a trench permit issued by Northampton. So, Correct. and you are totally fine with all that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so before I ask for any other comment, is there any member of the public who would like to comment on um, the question of the poll petition in this public hearing, for or against or neutral? Are there any questions from the council? Okay. Um, so you'll note that later on the agenda we have an order that would grant this um, petition with those conditions. Correct. Great. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please say aye. 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 Opposed any abstentions? Thank you very much. Um, let's see. So now it seems we can go directly to that order. So I'll move we grant the poll petition. In this what case, the conditions I, of the right. well, in this case, I've I've thrown a little curveball because here's what we have done. Normally, as Councilor Murphy has just shown, that's exactly what we do. We make a motion, or it's understood within the consent agenda that the motion is being made on that question. In the case of this poll petition, we thought it would be useful to actually write down the conditions in an order so that they were enumerated clearly. And this was done actually expertly by our administrative assistant to the city council in consultation with the city solicitor. So we actually have an order um, to do this for a poll. Um, and so let me see. Here it is. Um, can put it up on the screen. It's there already. And this is um, in the City Council, November 15th, 2018, upon the re recommendation of, of me, um, in order to approve a poll petition for Dryads Green. Whereas on September 17th, 2018, National Grid and Verizon New England submitted to the Northampton City Clerk's Office poll petition number 2704-5389, petition for joint or identical poll petitions dated September 13th, 2018, hereafter the petition, to relocate poll number six, 23 feet southwest of its current location, directly in front of number 55, uh, 55 Dryads Green. And whereas the Northampton Department of Public Works, DPW, has reviewed the petition and determined that there may be a conflict with the sewer lateral coming from either house number 55 or 57, and by memorandum from Felix Harvey to DPW Director Donald Scalia dated October 22nd, 2018, has requested that conditions be attached to any approval of the petition, and whereas the City Council wishes to approve the petition with conditions. You'll hear some duplication from what I just said. <coughs> Stay tuned because after this I want to have a brief discussion about streamlining, streamlining this process. Um, but to finish the order, now therefore be it ordered 
The City Council hereby approves the order for joint or identical poll petitions for petition 27045389 with the following conditions. One, these are slightly different than the ones that I read before. When the new hole for the new poll location has been opened, it shall be inspected by the DPW prior to the poll being placed. Two, if a sewer lateral is disturbed in any way, it must be repaired, relocated by the petitioners at their sole cost and expense and at the direction of the city engineer. Uh, finally, National Grid must obtain a trench permit issued by the city of Northampton and remit all associated fees for such permit prior to commencing any work approved by the approval of this petition. So now I can ask Councilor Murphy uh, to renew his, his motion to approve that order. Yes, sir. We'll move, now that it's an order, we'll uh, move to approve the order. Thank second. you very much. And, and second. Thank you. <coughs> so the, the significant change here is, of course, um, where the DPW recommended that the, or uh, suggested that the onus would be on the developer. In this case, um, you're changing the language to stipulate, and Lisa left, so I don't know. That's oh, what, gosh. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was going to ask. It, the, in now, <coughs> it it's on the um, the petitioners. Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering if they're apprised of this or have um, a version of this available to them. I would imagine if they did that, yeah, Lisa question. might not have left. <laughs> so we have that. I didn't specifically send one well, to her after Attorney Seawald had reviewed it. it was, he's the one who made that right. change, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that could be, you know. A, a reason the process should be improved. We sort of struggled with the appropriate way to do this, right, of course. Right. We sometimes just sort of informally mention conditions and this kind of thing. So my hope would be that um, we actually write this in an order. Mr. May, you want to be recognized? I, say, yeah. I, I actually don't think this is, I mean, if, the, right. if a national grid <coughs> auger hits our, um, That's a given, our right. sewer line, then mm -hmm. we're going to ask them to repair it. So they're the petitioner, so I don't think it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. repair or relocate and, yeah. yeah. I think that's. It sounds like the solicitor sort of exercising an abundance of caution, as he often does. Um, no, I so. see. I'm. I'm fine. It was just a, qu a question yep. of. That's fair I enough. Mean, I think Mr. Zinsky just left under the impression that the developers would be that it was all set. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, um, I mean, certainly the conditions that I think are appropriate, and if there's a problem, I suppose we could always revisit it in theory. Um, I have no objections otherwise. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so is there any other discussion on the question of the order? Councillor Nash. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, Councillor Bidwell had any thoughts to share on this. I know he's away. I, I, I haven't heard, seen anything, so. Not to my knowledge. Because okay. um, yeah. it is Ward 2. Okay. Um, so any other discussion on the order? Um, so. I think we can do this with uh, a voice vote. Um, all those in favor of uh, the motion to approve the order, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? So I would ask, since it's an order, can we have a motion to suspend rules for two readings, please? Um, a motion to suspend rules, please. Okay. Seconded by Council of Barge. Thank you. Any discussion on suspension of rules? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. any abstentions? Motion Move on second, second reading, reading, please. Seconded by Council of Barge. Any discussion on second reading? Um, then. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions. So that order is passed, and so the petition is, is granted. Um, so to continue down this, this torturous line of, uh, of civic work, if we can move to um, one of the orders that is farther down on our agenda. This is uh, an order to amend the council rules. Um, let's see what number is that. 18199. And so this would simply say we have a section of our rules that list the, the things that require only one vote to pass. And you notice we just spent a lot of time debating an order <coughs> outside of the consent agenda, and we had to vote on it twice. So I simply would like to amend the rules for the future. So it says petitions and orders to grant petitions only require one vote. What this means is we can have written orders that contain written conditions, but they can remain in the consent agenda and be approved with much less fanfare. Um, so that's what this does. Um, so is there a motion to? So moved. Second it. Okay. 
Um, any discussion on that rule change? <laughs> uh, in so far, we've discussed this before, and this actually came up in charter review, and also on when we discuss our rules. <coughs> that fact is, um, it's been long. It's been understood that we've actually misinterpreted what it meant by readings. Um, that, uh, but since it's been more or less embedded in our tradition, I suppose you could call it, or our legacy, that we. Uh, the first reading technically is when it's presented or put on the floor. That's the first reading when you actually read it. And the second reading comes at the vote. And that, and, but we do two readings principally because it actually did serve a purpose. It was, it allowed a two week gap in most cases, in some cases a three week gap for reconsideration or possible new information to come in, which so I think as a res because of that we decided okay, we did read this the wrong way, but it, the fact is it actually serves a purpose, but it's not mandated, and and, and I don't think any other council in the state or board does this. I think ha has two readings with this type of gap in it. It serves us, but at the same time, um, I I have no objection to anything that we can do to streamline this process when it seems it's superfluous and it doesn't necessarily. Uh, there it does we're still provided with an opportunity to react as you said we can right. actually modify and change it, it, as, as circumstances change so I that said I have no objection I think this is fine and, and you know maybe someday we'll revisit the rules and then in there yeah. in toto but no, I think that's right and um, you know one thing to point out is, is, is you're absolutely right we talk about this distinction between reading and vote and um, the section that I'd like to change. I think we made pursuant that right. discussion. We made a change to start calling them votes because that's what they are. So, just for the sake of completeness, this rule is 5.6 matters requiring one vote, and um, so it uses that word. And among the things that require one vote are administrative orders submitted by the mayor, licenses, approval of minutes. I mean, we just did that with one vote. Uh, acceptance of reports, it would be petitions and orders to grant petitions, like a poll petition. And that's really just to make, you know, if we choose to grant a poll petition through an order, that's the same as if we just did it the way Councilor Murphy did originally. Uh, also appointments, you know, we just did that on the consent agenda as well. And then this, orders to amend rules, so. So I think it's a common sense thing. Um, okay, and I think it will minimize the amount of of words we need to use to describe the placement of telephone poles in the future, but I appreciate the um, they are very consideration com of this. Compelling conversations, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we have a motion on the floor to approve. Any discussion on the rule change? One vote's required. Um, just since a rule change, let me, let's have a roll call, if you don't mind. Okay. Councillor Bidwell, not present. Councillor Carney. <coughs> Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And if we would just send the order to National Grid. Sure. Just, I doubt they'll have issues with it. Um, so let's see, we've jumped over the place, but it seems like we have completed all our work up to the Finance Committee. Oh so, it's moving right along. Laura, would you call the, the roll of finance? Sure. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor LaBarge. Present. Councillor Shera. Here. Excellent. All right, our first order of business is approval of our minutes from November 1st. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. <coughs> Second. Second. Any uh, alterations to the minutes? Hearing none, all in, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we have only two things to deal with in finance tonight. The first is 18202, an order to authorize intermunicipal agreements with East Hampton to participate in the Pioneer Valley Bike Share Program. Again, it's 18202. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that, whereas Mass General Law Section 40, uh, subsection 4A, allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units, and whereas Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 4A, requires that such intermunicipal government agreements be approved in a city by the city council and the mayor and whereas the city of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities 
Therefore, pursuant to Mass General Law Section 40, uh, subsection 4A, the City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton to enter into agreements with the City of East Hampton to participate in the Pioneer Valley Bike Share Program, along with the following entities which are already part of the existing intermunicipal agreement for this program, Holyoke, Springfield, Amherst, South Hadley, the University of Massachusetts, and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second? Second. And the Mayor is here to answer questions. Order is pretty self-explanatory. <coughs> uh, Mayor LaChapelle and the City of East Hampton recently received a grant, uh, which th is going to, going to allow them to buy into the Valley Bike Share system. So we're happy to have them, and this just amends our intermunicipal agreement to include them in the in the program. Mm -hmm. Questions for the Mayor? No, no questions. Then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Great. Uh, and the next is 18203. This is an order to authorize the payment of a prior year bill. Be it ordered that the City Council authorizes payment of a prior fiscal year bill from 2018 incurred by the assessors to the Daily Hampshire Gazette for legal advertisement. Uh, the dollar amount is $105.33. Do we have a motion to finance? Motion. Second. Second. Excellent. Questions for the mayor on this one? Bill, then, you know, slip through the cracks. Before July 1st. Yeah. Uh, and so um, we need to, we need council authorization to be able to pay it. Mm -hmm. So no questions. Hearing none. All in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Mm -hmm. And I think that is it for our uh, finance committee. Move to adjourn. I know of no new business. No new business. Second. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Back in the full city council. Uh, we have two financial orders. First is 18202, an order to authorize an intermunicipal agreement with East Hampton to participate in the Pioneer Valley Bike Share Program. Motion on this? Motion we'll approved. Second. Second. Any further discussion in the full council on this? I think this is great. Uh, great program and good expansion. Uh, good. So I'll ask for a roll call, please. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Yes. yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Donald? Yes. Sheriff. Yes. Okay, that is approved on first reading. Next is 18203 in order to authorize payment Excuse of. Excuse me. There was a request oh. for um, that that be two readings. Two readings, if possible. Move to suspend rules, please. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? Okay. All in favor of spending rules, please say aye. 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 Same extensions. Rules. Move uh, second reading, please. Second. Okay. Discussion on second reading. Okay. Well, when we're ready, we have a roll call. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Donald? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. And Councillor Carney? Yes. Okay. So that's approved on second reading. On sentence of the mayor. Uh, next is 18203 in order to authorize a uh, uh, prior year bill payment. Move approval. Move second. Okay. Discussion on the bill payment? Uh, okay. Let's have a roll call. Okay. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. And Councillor Dwight? Yes. Approved on first reading. Um, an order on second reading is 18192, an order to establish a tax classification for fiscal year 2019. Move approval. approval. Made by Councillor Dwight, second by Councillor Labarge. Any discussion on this order? Um, we had a hearing last meeting, of course. This establishes a tax factor of one uh, between commercial and residential property tax rates in the city. And um, it's been one for a long time and continue to support it, it being one in, in Northampton. So uh, hearing no other comments, we have a roll call on this, please. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Yes. Okay. That is approved in second reading. Uh, now we have an order on first reading. This is 18142, um, originally called an order to strengthen democratic representation in the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, though it's irregular, I'd ask for a motion first before this is read, just to get on the floor, if I might. Uh, I'd like to move as amended, please. Okay. Okay. Um, now we had a whole question about whether we would have to formally adopt the amendment. This is, an, this is an order that was sent to Legislative Matters, and Legislative Matters did adopt an amendment. I thought we might do it for good measure in full City Council, because <coughs> it's harmless. Um, 
So if you indulge me, if, if can I get a um, a motion? I've signed it. To to amend. To amend the order as introduced with the language that was that was uh, approved by Legislative Matters, which I I will read uh, for the benefit of the public, and this will be the uh, the language that we're taking up. So this would be um, in the year 2018 upon the recommendation, recommendation of me, uh, 18142 in order relative to the Northampton Housing Authority. Ordered that the mayor is hereby authorized and requested to petition the general court to the end that the following legislation be <coughs> adopted precisely as follows. The general court may make clerical or editorial changes of form only to the bill unless the mayor approves amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court. The mayor is hereby authorized to approve amendments which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of this petition. So that would be an act relative to the Northampton Housing Authority. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives and the general court assembled as follows. Section 1. Notwithstanding any other general or special law of the contrary, members of the Northampton Housing Authority shall include two members in addition to the five members provided by Chapter 121B, Section 5. One member appointed pursuant to this act shall be a tenant in a building owned and operated by or on behalf of the Housing Authority or a resident of Northampton who is assisted by the Housing Authority through a rental subsidy program. The other member appointed pursuant to this act pursuant to this act shall be a member of the Northampton Housing, Housing Partnership or such successor municipal body charged with promoting fair and affordable housing in the city. <clears throat> the members appointed pursuant to this act shall be appointed by the mayor with city council approval for initial <laughs> terms of one year and three years respectively. Thereafter, as the terms of the members expire, their successor shall be appointed in the same manner for a term of three years. A majority of total members of the authority, as amended hereby, shall constitute a quorum. Section 2, this act shall take effect upon its passage. So, Does it move that as an amendment? Please? Okay. And seconded by, uh, who will second that amendment? Second. second. Okay. Any discussion on adopting that amendment? Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Say abstentions. So thank you very much. That Sorry. cures my neurosis on that. Um, and we have an updated order here, which I have just read. Um, and it will be open to discussion from any members of uh, the City Council. I've spoken on this ad nauseum. <laughs> uh, happy to do it again, but I'd throw it open to others first, if I may. Councilor Dwight, please. Uh, yeah, I'd like to reiterate what I had said in more brief form, I suppose, in, the, in legislative matters. But first, it's to uh, commend the Council President on, this, on his initiative uh, and the and to responding to a genuine inspiration and need that, that has been, I think, through testimony, has been well established. Um, I'm grateful I was particularly excited when the initial proposal was um, suggesting a, a, a broader, more expansive representation of tenancy, and also allowing tenants to select from their own body, as it were, um, their representatives. And I understand the reason for the amendments. And, and in fact, actually, I, I got the sense, by and large, uh, from folks even you know, advocating in favor of the expanded version, um, that their sense was that the, the, most, the best prospect was to at least get something that acknowledges and recognizes that uh, uh, tenancy representation should be expanded in, in any form because it, it can only help as far as, uh, I, I mean, as far as many of those uh, problems and conflicts that have been described. So I'm, I have no problem with this order going forward. It's my hope that actually it does set precedent that the state considers that, and, and the Senate, uh, Senator elect. Uh, Joe Comerford came and spoke to this and said that she will carry this forward and, and with the same hope that this will become actually um, policy statewide. I also hope that in the process that it actually does have an opportunity to expand and that, that individual communities don't have to resort to home rule petitions in order to qualify for them, that, that, that it actually becomes part of policy in the state. And so here's hoping that we, that um, 
this very thoughtful, well-deliberated um, order will actually go forward and inspire other communities to respond. So I, I, I'm grateful, and I'm glad to vote in favor of it. Thank you, Councillors. Councillor Sherry, then Councillor LaBarge. Um, I just want to note for those that weren't here at the public forums that we had we held two public forums that were very well attended, um, and we heard a lot of feedback from um, from tenants in uh, the Housing Authority properties. So that was I feel like we we really were able to hear from many people, and, and I'm very grateful for everyone who came out and spoke to us. Um, and I just also want to note that at the the public forum that we held that was joint between Community Resource and Legislative Matters, everyone, all the counselors here were there. So um, if we don't have as robust a discussion tonight, I just want it understood that we've had now many uh, lengthy discussions um, with almost all of us uh, participating. So, um, and I also commend the council president. I, as I said and have said in multiple meetings now at this point, I, um, I was in favor of the the first order, um, but I'm pleased with the with the amended one, and I am glad that we are progressing somewhat with um, with more representation. Hopefully, thank you, Councillor uh, Barge. Um, I attended along with another councillor <coughs> board meeting at McDonald's house over the air conditioners to hear the board members stress to the director of no communication and or transparency of them being involved was very upsetting to me. They only knew of this by the article in the Gazette. I have also attended two hearings of Councilor O'Donnell's order. JFK school attendance was low, but the people that were there did voice their concerns. This Tuesday, a joint public hearing in the council chambers, and this is what I got out of it and my thoughts of attending it that night. I was not going to support this order in its original form due to concerns which I heard from members of the board. Voting would be unfair and adding on too many members being included in this commission, the number was too high. And that is from the board members that I had talked to. Besides, they were never informed of this happening and they were not happy about no transparency or communication with that. I find it troubling to hear at this Tuesday's meeting that the board members do very little. I feel they work tirelessly and they have their duties of what they can do and not do. They operate by the standards of their bylaws. A lot of people don't realize what is detailed with their job. I heard at Tuesday's meeting by a counselor that they have a roof over their heads and a stove to cook on. That is true, but I disagree, which your statement should have added that they should have the rights, like all of us, no matter where you live, apartments or a home. People have the rights of respect, dignity, and live in a safe place and be able to speak of their concern, concerns and have no fear. They want to make their apartments, which their homes, drug-free, safe, and be part of our community. Working together is so valuable. They want their concerns to be heard and not feel left behind. I was pleased to see in the Gazette how Councillor O'Donnell met with the mayor this time versus not the first time, which I felt if he had this order, would have been approved earlier. I feel this order will help strengthen the accountability of two extra added positions. These two added positions are being placed in the right direction for this board. I feel it will also strengthen directors' transparency and communication with the board and with the housing associations. The city councilors do care, and I am one who does care and wants changes to happen at the Housing Authority apartments. I support this order, changing the amount of membership, lowering it to two more added on. Thank you very much, Council. Are there other comments from members of the Council? Councilor Nash. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank 
Councillor Labarge for those remarks, uh, really capturing the, the um, feelings and passions that are behind this original proposal and that there's, there's a lot of things to be worked out and that, um, um, and that, as I said the other night, we need to recommit to helping uh, <coughs> to establish what was it, Councillor Joy called it, uh, tenancy representation. Exactly. Yeah, that that work really needs to be done, uh, both within the the properties and and and, is, and within a, some sort of advisory committee uh, in relationship to to the housing authority board. And these are all things that we can do. They they can be initiated right now. They don't require. Um, us going to the state house to get the okay to do these things, um, the, and so um, and one little technical thing, and I, I want to thank uh, Mr. Ansel for uh, mentioning this idea at one of our earlier hearings, which is the idea that more members on a board can be good. That this, frankly, this board is too small. Five people, you know that. Typically, a, a, a really good board, here we are, we have committees. We break out into committees to get work done. When you're five people, how do you, you really can't break out and have a finance committee, you can't have a grounds committee, you can't have, you know, whatever, it, whatever the work is that this board is trying to do to reach out to the tenants, they're, they're way too small. And so adding two more board members, I think, is a great idea. So. Um, that's my comments. Oh, and thank you, Councillor O'Connell. <laughs> Don't for forget that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just forgot to write it. Or three people have to <laughs> stick together. Thank you for those comments. Um, anyone else? Um, oh, Councillor Joyce. I, I just want to add that, that some of the discussion, and I think I think to Councillor Nash's point, it's absolutely true, and Edgardo's apparently, that I didn't hear those comments, but. Um, this is not your standard nonprofit board that just has fiduciary oversight. This is actually an authority. This, they have responsibility for um, providing optimal circumstances for the tenants. Um, it's a unique structure, a unique program. It has unique problems as a result. And, and as I said before, as I said last night, there is there is a stigma associated with people who um, who actually receive um, assistance. And it's, it's a cultural stigma that's repugnant. And it's not, it's not on the board. I don't think the, this is something the board carries. But the fact is, is that in the community, if I have an issue, a housing issue, with my landlord, I have, house, I have recourse to housing court. That, that opportunity is not available to people in the housing authority. Uh, as Edgardo pointed out, when there was a conflict, it went to district court. Um, and that's when the, the uh, housing authority was acting on a tenant. And it was a district court, not housing court, defending their, uh, giving them an opportunity to defend their right to stay in their, their home. So this calls out even more. It also underscores the, the, the necessity for having tenants have the opportunity to speak and also have an opportunity for a clear um, a line of grievance and a clear line of, uh, of, of problem solving that's a policy that's embedded that's, that everyone knows by heart and that has access to it. It's not, it shouldn't be an obscure, difficult problem. I mean, I, it's, it's rather impressive that many of the people don't even know that there is a grievance process. That, that is mm -hmm. not good. It's not good. So I, I as I said, I mean, I, I, I still think, you know, six more tenants elected would be ideal. I recognize and acknowledge that that's an aspiration that's probably not achievable. It's a pie in the sky attempt, at least at this point. But it should, it's worth noting that this board has enormous responsibilities. And it's, and it's a difficult challenge, as Councilor Carney can attest to. 
and trying to reconcile all the potential problems. But at the same time, the board has to know that they coming with that, there are, it is probably in their best interest to expand their board, to provide more voices to help them. And as you said, I, I love the idea of breaking out into subcommittees and having more opportunity, not limited to each board meeting, because these problems rise arise much quicker and need a quicker response. And I think this will provide an opportunity for the better flexibility and responsiveness, which is most important. Thank you. Councillor Klein. Um, I, it's funny that we're, um, we're having this conversation because Councillor O'Donnell thought to bring something um, forward to increase the representation of tenants in the first place. And I commend you for that, and I appreciate it. Um, so it's it's awkward and strange that I should be saying that I'm disappointed that um, we're not going with your first proposal because we're lucky that there's any proposal at all. And again, I thank you that there is a proposal that we're discussing here. Um, but I, I was really, um, I was really happy about the first proposal because the addition of six tenants really, I thought brought a robust, um, robust representation to the board that an additional two doesn't do quite in the same way, especially because they're not going to be elected by their peers. They will be appointed by the mayor. One of the issues that we heard in our hearings and that I've heard from a number of people who live um, in these, these communities is that there's a lack of trust. There's a lack of trust of the powers that be. So that includes the housing authority, it includes the um, executive director, it includes the city council, it includes the mayor. And so in order to create a situation whereby there's actual trust in the board that is responsible for actually creating mandates around all different aspects of the lives of, of the folks who live in these communities, it, it would go a long way to have a majority representation of tenants, people who actually live in that place. So this is all rather moot because this isn't what we're talking about anymore. We're not talking about adding six people. We're talking about adding two people appointed by the mayor. Um, and I support this proposal and I'm going to vote yes because I think that we do have to be realists and we do have to figure out how to push this forward at, um, at the state level. Um, but I think we as a council have to continue to think about what, um, what role we can play moving forward to um, to add to that sense of trust that tenants in uh, under the Northampton Housing Authority um, need to have about their own lives. Um, you know, we talk about this as housing communities, but it's so much more, and I think Councillor Labarge really talked to that, spoke to that. You know, this is people's homes, it's people's it's people's existence that we're talking about, and people want to and should have a voice about as many aspects of their daily lives and their homes as, um, as they should. I think we all do, most of us as homeowners here, some of us not, but most of us. Um, you know, we get to control all kinds of aspects of, of what we have in our homes and how we create our homes and how we create a sense of safety and security and comfort. And um, tenants in the housing authority should um, be able to have that same sense of comfort. And one last thing, and I, I talked about this at one of our meetings a long time ago when this first came up. Um, a lot of folks who live um, in housing authority communities, buildings, um, are people who have not had easy lives and have ha been really disenfranchised in all kinds of ways, been marginalized in all kinds of ways, whether it be because of disability or violence in their past or trauma in their past, um, because of their, their race, because of uh, the fact that they're low income. 
and it's almost like affirmative action, you know, in, in jobs or, or colleges. You know, we need to be responsible as electeds to figure out how we can um, expand their voices even more and give that leg up. And um, the reason that I really like the original proposal is it, it had more of that oomph. It had more of that giving a leg up to people being able to, to have a voice and be heard and have that, um, that landscape uh, in which they could, could be heard and uh, could have a sense of governance over their own lives. So um, again, I'm going to support this proposal in its current form, but uh, I just wanted to kind of give a, a bigger picture sense of you know why I'm supporting this and and just encourage all of us to think about how we can continue to to play a role in expanding people's voices who live in the housing authority. Thank you very much for those comments. Any any other members of the council? Um, well. Um, let me say, I would like to speak to this briefly. Um, and first, I'd like to sort of pay tribute to the process, because I actually think the process was pretty good. You know, I think sometimes the processes we have in, in public bodies are a little bit rough and tumble, and a little bit chaotic. It's not always the case that we get together and present something that is finished and ready for the council to ratify or, or rubber stamp. In this case, what we did is um, largely in reaction to public attention to, to issues that had been going on for a long time in the Housing Authority. Um, a proposal was introduced that was debated in open. It wasn't debated among a, a small group of people and then presented um, for no debate. I'm actually proud of the process and thankful in particular to uh, Council Vice President Shara, who is chair of the Committee on Community Resources, Councilor uh, Dwight, who is chair of Legislative Matters, because you facilitated a, a real community conversation. We often use that term, and sometimes it's not warranted. You know, we sort of pat ourselves in the back sometimes about that. If you went to Tuesday's meeting, you had people show up and they were supportive of me, and you had some people uh, show up and they were, you know, frustrated and disappointed with me and, and you know, and you heard both sides, but frankly, I, I actually felt good. The energy in this room was really nice. You know, it was, it was inspiring because people felt something. When was the last time the public as a whole felt something for what's going on in public housing? I mean, seriously, it's a, really a city in a city. If you add up the number of people who live or, an assist, or are assisted by the Northampton Housing Authority, it's a number of people that's larger than some small towns in Massachusetts. But it's really kind of an invisible city in our midst. So I'm proud that we had a conversation about it and that the proposal evolved. And you know, I, I take a lot of what Councillor Klein says to heart, in fact, all of it. And in fact, I supported my original proposal as well. <laughs> um, and what your comments on it, Councillor, are important because if they, whenever we make comments on something like this, we're elevating the conversation. And I actually really believe that. And ultimately, you know, I, I wanted to do something that actually, it doesn't do me any good to not pass something because, you know, we, have, we do have to uh, uh, hew towards the realities of, of, of politics. And so we went through this process and I'm, I'm proud of what we sort of built through a community process. And let me thank uh, the mayor for his collaboration. And let me uh, thank our two incoming uh, state uh, rep uh, uh, delegations. Senator-elect Comerford came to our meeting on Tuesday uh, and spoke in favor. And I appreciate her support. And we've had phone conversations and worked jointly together on this. Um, and I'm encouraged that she will um, be someone we can rely on on, the, on this issue. I'd also like to recognize that Representative-elect Sabadosa came to the previous uh, public forum. Um, in addition, let me thank the tenants who haven't really been, they've been mentioned but not thanked specifically. Um, you know, a, a number, it's hard for, I think, many tenants to get to these public meetings. As Councilor Barge pointed out, the first public forum wasn't spectacularly attended. The second one was really good. Uh, but they were part of the process too. 
Not all of them agreed with each other. It wasn't just a, a, a one block of opinion one way or another. But through this process, let me just try to highlight that I think this is a really strong piece of legislation. I want to be clear. No other city or town, if this were approved by the legislature, no other city or town in Massachusetts would have something like this. In some sense, it feels modest, but we're expanding a board, and we're going to double the number of tenants to two out of seven. We are going to have a, a housing advocate from the housing partnership. And as a practical matter, there will be effectively a majority since the governor's tenant is also, uh, appointee is also a tenant. I think about this in, in, in two dimensions. I don't want to go on forever, but if I may just say this, you know, it's about accountability and democracy to the tenants themselves. And it's also about accountability and democracy to the surrounding city. Because like I said, this is a city within a city that's isolated in, in almost every way, socially and legally. And we want to empower tenants. We also want to connect it to the surrounding city. I think that a representative from the housing partnership does that pretty well. Um, and I'm actually, I think that is a good improvement that the process has given us. So if we take this all together, um, I think it's something where Northampton is actually leading. And I echo Councillor Dwight's comments. I think maybe this, you know, this could spark more broad reform. You, you don't know. But um, I'm proud that we are, are, are putting ourselves out there and saying we, we want to do this in Northampton. We want to lead and we want to um, try to reform to the benefit of some of the, the most struggling people in our community. So I'm really proud of that. In fact, if this passes, this will be the thing I am most proud of doing on the council. Um, so that's what I think, and I thank everyone again for their careful consideration. Uh, any other discussion? OK. Uh, so we can have a roll call, please. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor <coughs> Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, that's approved on uh, first reading. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, we have a number of ordinances. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, these are, let's see, first 18173, ordinance to amend chapter 312, 36 of the code book. Increase the hourly rate in the E.J. Gare parking garage. Second. Okay. Um, Councillor Nash, as the chair of TPC, do you want to introduce this? Or the mayor, would you like to? Or somebody? I think we had a discussion about it at the last city council <coughs> when it came up in finance. Um, but I did provide a memo to you which just yes. outlines the recommendation, which is to um, increase the hourly rate from uh, 50 cents to 75 cents an hour, maintain the first hour free. Um, and, uh, and essentially, it also brings the garage in line with the other uh, interior surface lots, including the adjacent uh, Armory Street parking lot, as well as Masonic and uh, Strong Avenue, which you approved recently. So um, the goal is really to try to ensure that the, we're able to continue to make investments and upgrades uh, in the technology, but also maintain the physical infrastructure of the park. So this 25 cents is actually helping us to offset the 25 cents that we're um, seeing a loss of uh, through the credit card transactions, which increasingly almost half the folks are using when they park in the garage. So that's my Thank quick you. synopsis. Makes sense. Uh, Councilor Dwight. Uh, Your Honor, have, have you had any pushback since this has been announced and published in the I keep expecting to wake up, um, and it's a dream. And uh, usually, when we talk about parking, <coughs> although I have to say, I, I, um, I'm, I feel uh, I, I'm actually, you know, we did a lot of work, and we commissioned a study several years ago, um, and I think we've, you know, and that study included a public process where we got feedback from people. I, it's hard to tease comments from people about parking as you know it's yeah it's very difficult people very, no one has you about parking. right um but we got a lot of feedback and so i think we've been very uh carefully working to then implement aspects of that study and and you know the short term we did, we did some immediate changes the main street you know expanding it to two hours and uh, changing the technology and offering more credit card access and different payment access the app was one of the recommendations um 
And, you know, there was not a, a loud hue and cry about the increase on Main Street, frankly. Because I, I do think ultimately, and I've said this before, I don't, it's really about people being able to find parking. That's really the key. Um, and that's the thing we most worry about. And so that's the whole goal of parking management. And so I think, you know, people were more pleased about having two hours on Main Street than they were concerned about the, the price increase. And I think here, again, I think people recognize, um, you know, I was with, I just at an event up at ServiceNet, and Peter Whalen was joking that, you know, he went into Boston and parked for two hours, and it was like $38 to park in a parking garage in Boston for two hours. Um, and we're talking about charging 75 cents for two hours um, in the parking garage. So, so I think, uh, you know, as I said at the last meeting, I've spoken to the um, ownership of Thorns. They understand, they're comfortable with it. They see all the capital improvements we make in the garage. Um, and so there really hasn't been a whole lot of uh, uh, negative feedback. Well, it's, it's worth noting that the last time we increased. 19 years ago. I guess 19 years ago, yeah. there were rather strong opinions expressed yes. and shared. Yeah. And uh, it, it seems that maybe there seems to be a broader consensus at this point that this is, uh, e even with 75 cents, is a remarkable bargain as, far as these things go. Especially on a night like tonight. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> with, uh, with a snow emergency, no yeah. less so. So, yeah, I was just wondering. I, I, I expected something, but I'm, I'm. No, again, I think there's been, we've, do, we've done a lot of outreach around just our parking strategy generally and, and the park, you know, the philosophy of where we're trying to get to. And, and we're, this was one of the mid to longer term recommendations was to look at the garage rate. And especially once we increased, you know, the lot right next door, that's an outdoor lot uh, to a higher price. Um, it didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so that's why we're doing it. And, and really it's about having the revenue that we need to be able to reinvest in, in that building because it does require pretty much constant maintenance. It's a sort of a moving, living building, you know. Uh, it's basically a series of joints, uh, you know, concrete with a bunch of joints that we have to maintain. So, so that's the other um, key is to make sure we have the money to keep investing in it and keep up with maintenance. Councilor uh, Klein. <clears throat> Pardon me. <laughs> Your time expired. <laughs> I have two quick questions. Sure. Um, one, how um, how is the outreach going to be done to let people know that it's a higher price? And the other question is, are we going to be able to evaluate? I imagine you know there's constant data flow around how many people are parking there. So are we going to be able to track if? people are parking there less and going to um, places on the street because of the, you know, just give us some data about how people are responding. Yeah, we'll, we, we are always tracking that. We're always tracking. Um, that's one of the advantages of these new systems is that it's all, you know, we're collecting all this data. So we can certainly uh, track it and, and uh, obviously report back if we see that kind of issue. In terms of notification, um, uh, we'll, you know, obviously, Barrow is going to write a Pulitzer Prize winning piece about this. Um, and, uh, and so po fo folks will read about it there. And then we will obviously be uh, putting up signage. And I don't think we're going to implement it until the first of the year. Um, you know, you'll take a first reading tonight. Then you'll have a first reading in December. It's going to take us a little bit of time. And uh, so we don't want to actually do it in the middle of the holiday season, for example, to confuse people. So we probably will wait till after um, the first of the year. Plus, we have to reprogram our technology. So we'll do signage, and we'll obviously notify um, business owners. Um, but beyond that, I think it'll, um, uh, again, I, I actually think I'll, many people won't, probably won't uh, notice it, um, frankly. So we'll see. Um, we'll see what, how it works out. Is there an intention to put a sign right at the entrance, though? That yeah, there's already a sign, and so we would modify that, um, you know, just to say note the new, the new rate. Um, and so we'll definitely be letting people know that way as well. And all of our parking maps will be updated as well. To reflect that, um, so. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Okay. Um, thank you very much. So, uh, we have a motion on the floor. Um, it's clear what this ordinance does. We didn't read it, but basically amends that section and changes fifty cents to seventy-five cents. Um, so I will ask for a roll call of the council, please. Yes. 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 
Yes. Councillor <coughs> Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Yes. Okay, that is approved in, in first reading. Um, next is 18174, an ordinance to amend Chapter 350, 12.3, significant trees. Um, well, this is a very long ordinance. Um, is there someone, who, is uh, Director Fiden still here? Or, Your Honor, do you want to? Sure, I'm a Please. sponsor of it. I'm happy to speak about it. Um, this is the significant tree ordinance um, which the council adopted a few years ago. Uh, and it's part of our zoning. Um, and it requires that um, when there are uh, significant uh, trees uh, cut, um, meeting certain specifications, that uh, there is a mitigation uh, requirement um, for those. Um, we're not talking about street trees. We're talking about other uh, significant trees. Um, and obviously, the city has places a high value on uh, on trees and and our our. Uh, tree canopy, our overall tree canopy. Um, and at the same time, though, we also have other competing values um, supporting the development of affordable housing um, being one, um, as well as our, our support for um, renewable energy and, and promoting um, you know, our goal of achieving uh, zero energy as a city. And uh, so there are sort of these competing values that we're trying to strike a balance between. So. Um, what this amendment to that ordinance does, and I know the planning board has further amended it, um, I think they made a good improvement to it, um, is it allows that there's already a number of exemptions that exist to the significant tree ordinance, so it does create a process whereby um, if someone were uh, needing to remove trees as part of a net zero development um, or affordable housing, construction of affordable housing, uh, that they would have the right to obtain a waiver um, from the um, from that mitigation process, um, and I think the the intent of it was to um, not inadvertently create a disincentive to develop affordable housing or to develop net zero um, housing. So trying to strike a balance between those three um, very important values and but sometimes competing values. And as some of you know, I know the councilor knows, we have um, developments occurring out in Ward 6 um, with Habitat and with some other, um, other developments on Glendale Road, et cetera, um, where either it's affordable or the goal is to try to do net zero style housing. And in terms of this adds a cost to that process. So the other change, um, is, which is not really related to that exemption is the um, replacement tree, um, and it, the, this is actually something that the tree warden has requested, uh, changing the diameter requirement from two inch uh, to one inch as being the, the, the sort of the minimum diameter, and that's something that he recommends um, just in terms of the survivability and sustainability of the trees. So this is an ordinance that um, uh, I developed with the Office of Planning and Sustainability. We actually brought it to the Public Shade Tree Commission because obviously they're, they're kind of our subject matter experts when it comes to trees. Um, they uh, uh, agreed to co-sponsor it with me. They voted to recommend it and to co-sponsor it with me. So it's been through the Tree Commission. And then I know the Planning Board had a robust discussion um, and actually has presented this amendment, which, which actually kind of, I think, strengthens the ordinance um, because it does give, um, it's not just a cut and dry exemption. Um, it does allow them to try to look at each project in the context of, of you know, uh, whatever area of the city it is, whatever stand of forest it is, et cetera. So I think it's actually been improved going through the planning board process. So that's the summary. Before, now that we've had um, description, can we get a motion to uh, move, move to, for approval? Second. Okay. Councilor Sharon. Um, has this been a problem? I mean, are there developments that, that are either net zero or affordable that haven't gone through because of weighing the cost of replacing trees? kind of came on my radar because there have been some uh, where uh, we've, and we've gotten questions about it um, from, in, in one case, on, on an affordable housing development, um, and in another case, a net zero, uh, uh, someone who's working on uh, has an approval for s some um, homes, um, and in looking at uh, the cost and the cost of 
you know, the, the offset of the mitigation. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge is that, you know, t to build a net zero, you, there's more upfront costs sometimes. Obviously, I think the payback is worth it, and you end up with a much better home that's more um, cost efficient and obviously <coughs> better for the planet in the long run, but there's some more upfront costs. So um, in those two cases, that's sort of how it got on my radar um, when we started talking about this. So, um, so that's where this came from. So did they not go forward with those? They haven't gone forward at this point. They did not move forward. Um, and so, uh, and they're still kind of in a development phase trying to figure out what's the best way to move forward. Um, but in the meantime, that's how sort of getting that feedback, and this is, you know, sometimes you pass things and you don't quite understand what all the possible consequences may be. Um, and obviously, I think when this was adopted, it was, you know, obviously out of a concern of, of protecting trees and to make sure that, you know, they're, they're not just being clear cut. Um, but then you have this other set of competing interests. Right. And, you know, again, with affordable housing, which can be very expensive uh, to begin with, right. um, some of the most affordable units to develop are often affordable units. So then to then add this additional cost to the development on, um, you know, could be the tipping point in terms of whether or not to proceed. So that, that's sort of the genesis of how we came up with this and put it forward. Right, thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Dwight. I, I, I think that this also, the discussion on this should consider uh, the next order that follows, though those are the conditions uh, for the site plan submittal requirements at, yes, are, exactly. are also modified and made yeah. more robust, mm -hmm. and that was, and that is, comes from the recommendation, that is a recommendation from the, the tree committee. So yeah. that in, uh, in, in fact, some of the objections that we've had registered with us, that I believe that addresses those. And it's essentially issues about tree qualifi qualifying trees, drip line issues, um, uh, neighboring properties that might suffer a loss of, you know, be je a tree might be jeopardized in the process of approval. So. I agree. I think since the planning board as a structure is a discretionary board, but there's also much clearer guidelines and probably probably far more helpful for uh, potential developers at least knowing what they're getting into. And and the tree caliper issue, as I understood, uh, that the viability prospects are much higher for a, a one-inch caliper tree yeah. as opposed to, to uh, more mature trees. And the root balls are far balls. less. Yeah developed and and sometimes those um the the larger ones are more fragile and right. more susceptible to not making it so the longer view four or five year view is much better the prospects are much better for the smaller caliber yeah, and again it's we're not reducing the it's more right. you know two one inch caliper trees versus right. a two inch tree right. in the long run you know have a, a, a greater chance of um, surviving so so yeah, and, and I want to acknowledge the Tree Commission has done a lot of work, including developing a really helpful gu city guide to the types and species of trees and planting guidelines. And so we're trying to also make sure that that gets integrated into the process, which I think is which, which I understand was adjusted to, uh, it built into a concept of resiliency for climate change. Mm -hmm. and they said. Yeah. But also just so that we weren't wouldn't have developers planting trees right. that aren't really suitable for New England. We have seen that before. Yeah, or for telephone wires or for whatever. So um, so we're trying to make sure that the tree commission's work is being integrated into the planning and development process. <coughs> Any other counselors? Did I write the original ordinance with Jesse Adams? I think I remember yes, that happening. Did, yes. did you do that? Tree ordinance. Yes. Yeah. I, I thought that was uh, Owen Freeman Daniels, but no. No, no okay. I don't think so. No, I think we, anyway, um, I think, it's funny, I think I think this is, is much, much better. I mean, this that passed, and I remember, you know, being in support of it, but um, thinking about how it would actually be implemented, and I guess we've had some experience, and I mean, this, these are just great improvements, so, so thank you. This is great. Um, so we can vote on, unless there's any discussion on this? Okay, so I'm gonna waive the formal reading of it because we've had ample description. So uh, we have a motion on the floor. If there's no other comments, I'd ask for a roll call on first reading. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Cohen. 
Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Navarre. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Okay. Proven first reading, and you heard it foreshadowed before. The next is 18179, New Orleans to amend Chapter 350-11.5 B2 site plan submittal uh, requirements. Um, is there any any need to? No. No, and I'll mo I'll move to put it on the floor. Okay. So. Any further discussion on it? I mean, you sort of heard many of the salient points raised. Um, is there any desire for me to read this ordinance? It's a public document, and it's in our, our packets. Um, and it um, specifies site plan submittal requirements, um, many of which, um, well, with regard to uh, trees. So it interfaces with the other ordinance that you just heard. So if there's no other discussion or comments, then I would ask for a roll call on this ordinance. Yes. 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 Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Navarre. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Yes. That's approved in first reading. Um, the next is 18183, the Get Off My Lawn Act of 2018, um, also known more formally as an ordinance relative to no parking on grass plots or tree belts. Uh, the, the, this is not an opportunity to be recommended either from TPC or the legislative matters at this point. So we ask that uh, we Oh, it's punt. still pending? <laughs> yes. Motion to punt, so we don't need, <laughs> we, can, we can punt without <laughs> objection. So punted. Um, let's see, so now we are at 18184 in ordinance to amend chapter five of the code um, by adding section 5-7, designating certain municipal, uh, certain positions as municipal employees. I'll move that. Okay. Second. Seconded. So, Mr. Mayor, you want to describe this? Or? Certainly. Um, uh, I've come to this council a couple of times um, during this term to ask for orders designating um, certain positions as special municipal employees, which is a, which is a, um, a special designation uh, that allows for uh, people to serve in most largely unpaid positions. Um, as volunteers for the city uh, without triggering certain ethics um, issues. And um, the, the typical way we've done it in Northampton is case-by-case case basis. The mayor brings forward an order and the city council approves it, and then literally they're kept in a folder in the city clerk's office. And so when we're trying to like figure out, okay, has this person been designated, has that been person been designated, we go downstairs and there's literally typewritten orders from the 60s and 70s. Um, and so the goal of this, because as we were looking at making some of these other changes, um, we looked around at some other cities who had actually moved it into their code book so that like there was a complete list um, always in the code book. And then when you went to go ahead and update it, then you would update the code book as opposed to um, having to check the folder in the city clerk's office. So really the goal of this was just to, um, to streamline this. Um, to a, and as you see, it actually is designed to supersede all previous orders of the council because there are boards that were designated you know, in the 60s or 70s that don't exist anymore. Um, so this is, as far as we can tell, the most complete and up-to-date uh, list of either the um, boards or the uh, positions, um, including the election positions, that we want to designate as special municipal employee. Oh, good. So, uh, and then forevermore, when anyone has a question, they can go to the code book. Um, we can provide that to the Secretary of State um, who has to enforce this. And anytime we pass an order, we're supposed to send it to them. So we can just send them any amendments to the ordinance. So this is not a requirement of like the, mass, the modernization, municipal modernization no, bill it's or not. anything? Um, no, it was just trying, our, doing our own little modernization yeah. here in the city. And it, it no, it's good. arose out of this, the, the two recent ones we did for uh, coaches and extracurricular right. clubs. Could, could you have done it through administrative order where you establish all We thought coaches? about it, but I think the issue is because it's a two-step process, uh -huh. I just felt like I just felt like an ordinance would have been better. Uh -huh. um, and also, yeah, I think the because really the, the under mass general law, I mean, you have the uh, you know the council can. I suppose you can vote it down and uh, just the administrative order is a slightly different animal so we just felt that it was okay. cleaner to have it in an ordinance and I think there's a greater awareness of the code book generally than the administrative code yeah good so. 
Thank you. Councilor Murphy. Yeah, this really isn't breaking any new ground. I mean, most of these positions over the time I've been involved with the city, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, we're our, this, they're already made special municipal employees. So, I mean, this basically gets away from the day of the sticky note in a file to say this one is, this one isn't, just centralizes where they're all converted in one document. Uh, but I, I don't think we're really breaking any new ground here. We're just cleaning up the, the books only and ones we are having adding, one place. The only things that we are adding in this was the election worker positions. Um, and that's mainly a, um, a recognition that we do have some uh, city employees who sometimes go over the hours, volunteer to be a, yeah. you know, a warden or to help with voting duty. Yeah. So we wanted, that's, that's one of the places where you need the special and municipal we just employee status. Made them all hourly employees to exactly. keep track of what we're paying them, so it makes sense to do this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions or comments? No. no? Okay. Makes sense to me. Straightforward. Thank you. We have a motion on this one? Yes. All right. Um, if there's no other discussion, ask for a roll call, please. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor yes. Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Approved in first reading. Next is 18196, and we're in its relative to parking on Grove Avenue. Do um, you have a map for this one by any chance? Well, um, oh, we act did not acted on this? We're, well, we're there's a request not to act on this. Okay. Um, out of legislative matters, it became clear that the residents uh, were pretty dissatisfied with the prospect and that transportation parking, the chair. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, also agreed that possibly there was, uh, it, it was worth reviewing and reconsidering a proposal. So the, the, essentially the request was to withdraw. So we came forward with a negative recommendation from uh, legislative matters. Okay. Do we want to describe what the proposal is that we've been? Yeah, uh, uh, defer we're, to Councilor Klein or Councilor Shera if you want to, depending on how you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw it in the middle of the floor. And no, no, I'm sorry. The real There's some history Klein. to this. Please, the Council from Ward 7, please. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if we want to go into it in depth right now, but um, I've been working really closely with the folks there on Grove Avenue. Essentially, they submitted a proposal to the TPC, and one aspect out of about three aspects that they wanted addressed was um, what they wanted and what came out from the TPC, which is um, no parking on the westerly, westerly side. side. Yeah. Um, get my directions mixed up. Uh, but they're the... Um, director of the DPW went out and did a site visit and uh, made a decision to create a no parking zone on the easterly side that um, is actually against the desire of uh, two of the houses on the street. And it also didn't address the fact that there are still two households, kind of three households, that literally can't back out of their driveways when there are cars parked on the easterly side. So um, they were disappointed and it, it just doesn't address um, some of the very, the most important, important issues that they brought forward. So uh, that's, that's what the issue is. And I have, if anyone's interested, I have pictures and all kinds of um, visual show and tell that I can share to illustrate this more. Okay, we're open to that, Councilor Murphy. Well, my take was they just wanna blow up this version and it will be back once they perfect Right. Once they work with DPW to perfect the distances and exactly what they want, so this version goes away, we will see them probably after the first of the year with a corrected version, okay. and it will come back and take place. So why don't we just vote this down? Is that? Yes. That's what we're going to do? Yeah. Council Insider information. Yeah, uh, so the residents, there, were, there was two things that they wanted. They wanted to ban parking on one side of the street, and they also wanted it better delineated on the other side where people should park and um, that uh, the TPC broke that into two parts and one has to do with what we can actually do is we can create an ordinance for the westerly side of the street banning parking. The, the other portion which is the line striping solution which uh, I 
believe was recommended by the neighbors and which the TPC is interested in exploring. But this, along with several other uh, requests for line stripings have come before the TPC. And rather than just move forward with this, and we, we discussion uh, came to the conclusion we need a policy to make these decisions so we can, de we can determine w whether or not a, a street qualifies for line striping. Um, and so that is in process right now. The, uh, we, uh, we asked uh, DPW to uh, come up with a proposal. Uh, we're expecting something in maybe January or February because they're very busy right now. Um, so this, this move forward with the ordinance piece, but not with the line striping piece, which would actually just remain over at DPW anyway, since it's, it's basically a work order. So. Please. So I'd like to make a motion to put this on the floor for the purposes of voting it down. Okay. Second. Any, any further discussion? Okay. So. I will trust with, uh, trust with the comments of others and the, the neighborhood, and so I'm happy to vote no on this. Um, so roll or call. yes to turning it down, depending on. <laughs> you don't want to confuse anyone. <laughs> no, no. It's just a vote. Oh, Councilor Nash, excuse I, me. Right I under just the want to add one more thing okay. that the TPC is committed to working with the, with the neighbors on this street, with, that we understand that the way things are shaking out at the moment, it, it, it wasn't to meeting their desires, but. We're yes. going to keep working on this. So this is not the end. Yep. It will be back. <laughs> Noted, and I'm, I'm sure appreciated by the residents. Okay. So. Councillor Dwight. Uh, no. Councillor Klein. No. Councillor LaBarge. No. Councillor Murphy. No. Councillor Nash. No. Councillor O'Donnell. No. Councillor Shara. No. Councillor Hardy. No. That fails. <laughs> <laughs> that feel good? It was so it did negative. Feel good, actually, it did really <laughs> resoundingly. It was a good thing. <laughs> it's like the first time for me on the council that we voted no. No, that's no. not true. <laughs> don't, don't say that. Okay. <laughs> All right, next. I'm going to vote no on everything else we have left. <laughs> except Ooh, for a journal. Raise back. <laughs> raise back. Yeah, raise back. <laughs> All right, so 118196, uh, an ordinance relative to parking on Wilder Place. Um, so, well, we'll gonna vote. thank you. Second. Made and seconded. All right, so this uh, would add parking prohibited on Wilder Place uh, on the westerly side mm -hmm. uh, from Main Street in Florence all the way to the end of the dead end, and on the other side from Main Street to uh, point 45 mm -hmm. uh, feet away from Main Street. Mm -hmm. Councilor Murphy. And say. there is consensus on this one both at TPC and at council and with the neighbors. And in this one, everyone's in their happy place and has a positive recommendation and we should move forward on this one. Okay. So this is overflow from the pie bar, I'm, I'm sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I move to recuse myself. Me too. <laughs> yeah, one, one slice at a time. <laughs> okay. We are so. blamed, Bill. <laughs> I'm sorry for saying that, Councilor, <laughs> Councilor Nash. I just want to add that this is moving forward with positive recommendations because it lacks, it wasn't connected with line striping. And so right. okay. it may be at some point, but that's, that's why this is moving forward the way it is. But people park, I guess, a lot on, on Wilder Place just for whatever. Mm -hmm. Cooper's, is it close enough to Cooper's? I don't know. Very close. Okay. Um, all right, sounds reasonable to me. Uh, any other discussion? We have it on the floor. Uh, so roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 First reading. Any new business this evening? I would move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Any opposed to adjournment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.